Good morning, everyone. This is Brad, the Cooking Critic Cleric. After a year hiatus, as I love to cook, I'm critical, I'm pastor. Yeah, you think I've been doing more of these in this COVID pandemic, lockdown, indoors, but the answer is no. When you're editing a lot of videos, a lot of videos for uh, church, for worship, you just don't really find the time or the desire to do more. But uh, now that we're going back in person for worship, masks, of course, um, I want to give you a very quick double feature review of uh, two movies on HBO Max. I treated myself to extra HBO Max so I could watch the Justice League, Zack Snyder cut, and by bonus, get to watch Godzilla vs. Kong. So I'm going to give you a very quick rundown, the good analysis, my score, and bad. Uh, first off, Justice League. I did not like Justice League when it was a Josh Whedon uh, 2017 cut. Um, it just felt very uh, Marvel envy. And also messy, you could tell that the, the directoral changes and the studio pushing that needs to be lighter, more goofy, Marvel-ish, Marvel envy. Uh, that Snyder's vision was cut out. And granted, because of Batman vs. Superman, yeah, it, there, there was a desire for something different. So now, fans are like, we want the Snyder Cut. I'm like, whatever, you want the Snyder Cut. So here's the Snyder Cut, and oh my gosh, I had such a great time. The general story is that Superman is dead. Um, there's a great threat of this guy called Stephen Wolf, who's from another galaxy dimension, whatever, who is out to find three mother boxes that will help him conquer the world for his master, uh, Darkseid. Ooh, and so, so Batman uh, has to assemble a team to stop him, and you know, we're probably going to need Superman also, because death is only temporary in comic books. So, what I like about it, I loved the movie <laughs> but I love the visuals I like that it was darker I like that the tones were pulled back um, even the four by th uh, three perspective on my television didn't bother me it felt very comic book like because it's always up and down um, when you read a comic book I also liked Snyder's approach to these heroes the thing about Marvel which is both a good but also worth noting is that they're very approachable they're very human they're people that you would like to uh, have dinner with or um, have a beer with and that approachability makes you feel like, well, what would it be like if I could be a superhero? What would I do? Not, not DC, not Zack Snyder's universe. These are gods among men and women. And I like that. And I like that tension. Even with the possible exception of Flash, he's the most human character. Um, you can tell that they really have a different uh, weight on their shoulders. And that makes them very unapproachable. But also, um, s the spectacle of watching them is that much more elevated, especially with the stakes of what could happen. It's one thing about Marvel, is that these movies are very safe. Nothing wrong with safe. You can take your family and have a good old time, but there are so many Marvel movies that have the safe element that there's a wink and nod to the audience that you know you're just here for a good time to hang out with your favorite people, and so you do. Think of like uh, the sequels to Iron Man or Thor. Think even Guardians of the Galaxy. It's just a good time with possible exceptions, big exceptions of Infinity War, Endgame, and I would say Winter Soldier. Even Civil War has a little bit of a wink, wink, nod, nod. Are we still uh, friends or are we enemies now? Yeah, stuff like that. You just... But here, no, they don't get along. They have their problems, big problems. Um, they rub each other wrong. It's only by teamwork and common purpose that they are able to assemble and get stuff done. And I loved Stephen Wolf redone um, in this version, that he feels both vulnerable and desperate and even more intimidating. Wow, you cannot believe when you let a director have a free reign, not worry about runtime, because a four-hour movie in the theaters, it will never happen. But streaming? Sure, why not? To see his vision, and even maybe to have four years of what worked, what didn't, and to execute. Wow, hot dog. I love this movie. I cannot wait to see it again. Negatives, Lois Lane. She's here to be sad. That's pretty much it. And I love Amy Adams, and I think we need to do more with her, but what can you do with her? I don't know, but it did not work. Some people brought up the complaint or criticism that it's way too long. I don't share that complaint, and I actually have a problem with it because it's called a pause button. You're watching it from home, and it has chapters. Besides, there are plenty of people who binge on entire series that take up 10 episodes at 45 minutes each. So why are we complaining about time? I think it's just because you don't like it in general. So the length of the movie is not a problem. Also, the epilogue felt very tacked on. It was messy. It didn't flow with the film very well. 
I like that he gave a tease of if Snyder somehow was able to make more movies, what it would look like, including Nightmare with a K. Uh, that would be so awesome. I would totally be in on this. But that may not never happen. But in the meantime, I love this movie. It was fun. I love it's different from Marvel. I love the characters in it. I love the relationships, the tension, the villain, and the overall story. Even though it sometimes made some logical... Oh, by the way, Cyborg. Whoa, what a huge improvement. Um, it made a lot more sense. It felt like a great, fun, engaging movie. It's an 8 out of 10. Easily. I can't wait to see it again. Now there's Godzilla vs. Kong. Smash! That's pretty much it. Yeah, really, that's about it. It is a movie about, you know, we have to have this uh, shadowy corporation that's doing some shadowy things. It has to do with the Titans. And, and, then, and, then, and then Godzilla, he was a one time ally. And now he's blowing stuff up. So we'll get King Kong. And maybe they fight each other because they have this ancient history and whatever. This is a movie that knows exactly what it is. And that is the bonus. Um, sometimes with these monster smash giant movies, it focuses too much on the human characters, and I don't care about the human characters, and neither do you. They're boring, they're set pieces, they help the movie story along. You gotta have a few, so you can at least have a reason why we're having a problem. But we don't need huge character development. We need, don't need emotional scenes for the most part. We just need to see Smash. There are two human characters that I really liked. One was the deaf girl who communicates with Kong. I actually found that to be very engaging. It got my interest. The second is the conspiracy guy who does a podcast about all the shadowy stuff that's going on. Um, and to see that he was right about a lot, that got me tickled. He had some great one-liners. Also, Kong. I love watching Kong. I love watching him think. And in the monster movie, is there that much thinking? Ah, no, but at the same time, you can see this is a, a creature of great intelligence and... Um, desires and you know suspicions. I like that with no dialogue. That's cool. Um, and then to watch things smash and lots of extra monsters, which I was not expecting. More smash, 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 break, throw down, human characters, cities, smash. Yes. Negatives. Um, one. Why do all these movies have to have stupid, annoying? cowardly people to be in the movie. Every one of these movies has one. This one has a teenager one and I hated him and frankly if he was not in the movie you wouldn't miss him. He doesn't add anything to the plot. That annoyed me greatly. Um, secondly um, this wasn't Casablanca. You know, it's just a deep emotional Smash, smash! That's what you want to see. If that's what this movie delivers. It's and at times the movie understands that we need more monster, less humans, and it gets better to that balance. But at times, especially the first thirty minutes, not so much. But you know what? This movie would be perfect in a theater full of crowds and popcorn and yelling and and um, screaming and clapping and just because you don't have to really pay attention you're enjoying the spectacle and sometimes movies are events they're not to you know engage you in a deep level you know because it's not what's a deep movie this isn't Schindler's List this isn't Shawshank Redemption this yeah this is Godzilla vs. Kong and it knows it easy 7 out of 10 Fun time. I don't know if I'd ever see it again. Probably not. I'll just stick to the trailers or watch the scenes of, you know, Smash 1, Smash 2, boom, boom. And that will be great. I hope they made more because it worked and it was a lot of fun. The end. And because I have another 30 days left or 20 on HBO Max, we got more combat. Yes, and I get to watch it now. And it will be great. May the force be with you. God bless. And have a great Monday, Thursday. Yeah, go figure. Bye.